Good evening. I'm Phil Phillips. Welcome to Talking About, a unique interview program where we ask people who are actually there to talk about it. This is the kind of special programming that we normally save for Pledge Week. Tonight is the first of a five-part series of interviews with people who figured prominently in Christ's passion and death. Because this is radio and you can't see them, I will comment that they are all remarkably well preserved for their age. My guest this evening is the man who put the villain in villainy, one of the most hated people in history. I'm talking, of course, about Judas Iscariot, the man who betrayed Jesus and set in motion the events leading to the crucifixion. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Thanks for having me on, Phil. You've become something of a household name over the centuries, haven't you? Uh, you could say that. Um, my name has become something pretty terrible, as you said in the introduction. I'm the worst kind of traitor. I've heard people call someone like that a Judas. That's what I mean. Um, everybody knows about me and everybody knows what I did. Yes, that's true. Well, nobody ever asked me why, so I'm glad to have a chance to explain myself. Explain yourself? You mean excuse yourself? No, no, there's no excuse. Um, but I've gone over and over things and try to understand why it happened. Well, give us some background on yourself. Where are you from? I was born in Kiriath. It's, uh, it's a town about 30 miles south of Jerusalem. Uh, that's in Judea, right? Yep. I was the only Judean apostle. So you never bumped into Jesus when you were growing up? Uh, right. But I heard about him. I mean, everybody was talking about him and the wonders he was doing. Being a curious guy, I went to see for myself. And then? He had such a powerful way about him. Uh, it wasn't like me to just drop everything, not at all. But one day he looked me straight in the eye and said, follow me. No excuses. And I did. Uh, not just me. Uh, there was 12 of us. What were you all supposed to do? At first, stay close to him. Uh, listen to him. Learn from him. Everything we did, everything he said was so wise. He spoke to these huge crowds of people. He told them stories that he called parables. Uh, the parables were hard to understand, but Jesus always explained them to us. We got front row seats to see a lot of miracles. Jesus was the best at driving out demons and healing people. I saw it with my own eyes. Blind people could suddenly see. You people could talk. It was amazing. But did you all just stick together? We were together a lot. Uh, but Jesus had another plan for us too. What was that? Uh, we'd be his assistants in spreading the good news, you might say. Really? He gave us the authority to do a lot of things he was doing. Casting out demons, curing sicknesses, how did that feel? It felt great. Uh, who wouldn't want power like that? So you were the lucky ones. No, not really. What do you mean? The Lord warned us that things would be tough out there. Uh, even though we'd be dealing with our own people, we'd be in danger. Why? People are afraid of what they don't understand. Some of them would think we were demons ourselves. Jesus said we might be persecuted, beaten, thrown in jail. He said even our families might turn against us. Wow, that is tough. But we believed in him so much that we were willing to go. And Jesus told us not to be afraid, that God would tell us what to say, what to do. He said even though we might be killed, no one would be able to kill our souls. 
Did that make you feel better? Yeah, it really did. So how did the traveling thing work? Did you stay at inns or? Uh, no. Uh, Jesus was very clear on this. We were supposed to travel very, very light. No baggage, no extra clothes. We'd be taken care of. There'd be a house in every town where we could stay. We just needed to figure out which house it was. Did it matter? Oh yeah, we weren't supposed to stay where people didn't want to listen to our message. We needed to move along until we found a place where people really welcomed us and wanted to hear what we had to say. So did you have something special to do in the group? Very special, I think. I'm a pretty smart guy. I love taking care of things, keeping things in order. In order. So, Jesus, uh, so Jesus assigned me the job of holding on to our money as we traveled. I made sure we had enough to eat and anything else we needed while we were on the road. So when did it all go wrong? I got greedy. I guess holding on to money was too much of a temptation. So I started to skim a little bit off the top here and there and keep it for myself. No one had a clue. It was a pretty good system. I always told myself I'd pay it all back someday. So it really wasn't a problem for my conscience. And did you pay it back? No. I just seemed to get worse. One night a woman came and Jesus poured and poured expensive perfume all over Jesus' head. I yelled at her and said that money could be used to feed the poor. And meanwhile inside, I was thinking that money could be used by me. That's pretty low. You don't know how low yet. Jesus himself told me he was going to be arrested and crucified. After all that believing and following, Jesus was going to leave us. What would become of us? We'd be found out and arrested and killed too. So I panicked. I sold out. It was the money. Always the stupid money. What did you do? I asked for money from the chief priests, 30 pieces of silver, and then I'd point Jesus out to them. Wow, that is low. I told you. My conscience was bothering me and I still wasn't sure I could go through with it. So I went to the Passover dinner with the other apostles and Jesus. Right then and there, Jesus said, one of you will betray me. It felt like a knife in my heart because I knew then that somehow he knew. But still I said, is it I, Rabbi? And Jesus answered, it is you who say it is. And I ran out of there. Now, I could have stopped the plan then and there. And believe me, I thought about it. But in the end, in the end, I took the silver. I brought the guards to where Jesus was praying in the garden, and I kissed him. That was a signal I had given them. The second I did it, Jesus looked at me and said, Friend. Friend? After what I had done? Oh my God. Then Jesus spoke to me for the last time. Are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? How did you feel? sick to my stomach. I wanted to undo what I did more than anything in the world. I ran back to the priests and tried to give them the money back. They wouldn't take it, so I threw the silver on the temple floor. I never wanted to see money again. What had it gotten me? It had killed my soul. So you tried to escape? That's one way to say it. I hung myself that night. I couldn't bear to live, knowing I was causing him to suffer and die. But Judas is a traitor of the worst kind. I'm so sorry. I deserve all the misery I have, but I pray that somehow Jesus can still forgive me. I pray that I will not be tormented for all eternity. All I want is to be with my friend again. 
I'll pray for you too. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And that concludes this edition of Talking About. My guest this evening was Judas Iscariot. Join us next week for episode two of our series when I interview Pontius Pilate. For now, this is Phil Phillips. Thanks for listening. Good night.